Hi, Harry. Hello, Bob. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Well, thank you for uh, gracing our website. Um, you, uh, you, you. I, I think you probably, actually, for our regular viewers, literally need no introduction. But I might as well, just in case we have a few strays out there, um, tell people that you are indeed Harry Shearer. You are uh, commonly hailed as a creative genius. Um, you are, uh, your, your work ranges from a, a famous uh, role in uh, This is Spinal Tap to, to uh, roles in a lot of other movies, in, including A Mighty Wind. Um, you do the weekly radio show Le Show, which I uh, happened upon about seven years ago and have been uh, uh, a fan of ever since. You, you, you do a lot of uh, voices for The Simpsons, notably uh, Mr. Burns. Um, and you, uh, I'm sure there are whole dimensions of your creative uh, output that I've left out, and you should feel free to, uh, to supplement that introduction as necessary. Well, self-interest requires me only to say that I have a, a record out right now called Songs of the Bushmen, which is uh, original songs about some of the leading members of the Bush administration that's available on iTunes. And, and of yeah, I've heard, I've heard some of those, and they're very good. And, and I... And I actually uh, have uh, the, uh, the 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 jacket from the CD uh, in in front of the camera. I'm putting in front of the camera. It's um, it's it's it's, uh, it's a memorable image, and and it's I understand that it is uh, to some extent maybe gotten in the way of the marketing uh, of of the CD, right? I mean, apparently a company called Clear Channel. Um, for your purposes, that has been kind of a misnomer. Clear Channel. They have not been. <laughs> been, a, been an avenue for distribution for you or for marketing? They have been anything but a clear channel. Yeah, they. Uh, we wanted to. Uh, the record company that I'm with uh, wanted to advertise the record by putting up the image for a week and then, without any words, uh, sort of to tease public attention, and then to uh, reveal, oh, it's a record by Harry Shearer and all that. And uh, they were very happy to take our money to do this. It, this would requ require an electronic billboard so that uh, the message could be changed without having to pay guys to go up and paint it. Um, and they were really delightful. And, yeah, you know, this was particularly in Chicago. We needed their, their uh, billboards. And, uh, yes, it, we'd be delighted. And it's a, this is how much it costs. And, you know, we have billboards in other cities, too, if you'd be so interested, blah, blah, blah. And then the art came into them, and uh, their tone changed to uh, what I characterize as angry school mom, and all of a sudden it was, this artwork is not acceptable, please submit replacement artwork immediately, and we said, that's the cover, there is no replacement artwork, what do you want, a picture of Bush with a crown on his fucking head? So um, that was the end of that uh, opportunity, but I must say in fairness that it's not only the giants of the industry, like Clear Channel, uh, a behemoth which should be broken up forthwith, that behave that way, a, a little company that has uh, electronic signs in, in uh, coffee shops and other retail establishments in San Francisco and L.A. We had approached about doing something similar, and uh, they similarly pulled the plug. So it's the big guys and the little guys ganging up. Hmm. And uh, I would say, I mean, in Clear Channel's defense, i got to say, if, if I imagined this, this was going to be on billboards. Uh, was it, uh, the, the plan was that this would be on billboards on highways mm -hmm. all across America? Well, you no, could imagine Chicago, it. All, all around Chicago. You could imagine it causing the occasional rubbernecking delay. Oh yeah, unlike the billboards of sexy women to sell fire insurance. You mean? I never, I never look at those. Yeah. Um, but it is, you know. And honestly, I don't think. I mean, you know, I'm not a fan of piercings gen generally. My 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 generation didn't go in for tongue studs and stuff. But I really mm -hmm. think it's not that bad a look for Bush. Oh, it's it's uh, it. Well, yeah, it's not. It, his nose does look comfortable with the bone in it. Uh, I, I have to say, I don't think Clear Channel is looking after the uh, the welfare of highway drivers. You don't think uh, that's it, huh? I don't think so. I think they're, you know, when you look at the polls, which I, I try to do rarely because I don't believe in them, uh, and you see that uh, basically uh, Clear Channel is among those people who, uh, uh, in another context, Donald Rumsfeld once described as dead-enders. Uh, they're among the 22% who still think that, uh, oh, it's not appropriate to uh, make fun of this guy. Yeah. Now, uh, Clear Channel is alleged to have political leanings. Yeah. Um, it could be that their motivations are not pure in this case. But, uh, I've, you know, I've listened to some songs uh, from the CD, uh, and they're quite good. 
And I've even, uh, a few of them, I don't know how many of them are, are viewable on the Internet, you know, the, the actual video version with you playing the role of the person who is ostensibly singing the song, right? I mean... Yeah, we, there we, are there are uh, three that we've uh, done videos of that are available at mydamnchannel.com. One is the, the only song that's not about an individual, 935 Lies, where I, I play right. sort of uh, the leader of a, a corporate seminar on lying. Uh, and uh, one is the Carl Rove uh, tune where I do play Carl Rove, and, and I'm gratified that people have seen that and said, where are you? Because uh, the makeup is so good. Uh, yeah, I, it, it's quite impressive, actually. I, yeah. I um, you, you, and, and then you do Bush in the other one. I do uh, Bush, and then my wife Judith Owen plays uh, Condoleezza Rice in uh, the Condi Rice song called Jim Buds. And no, wait, I'm sorry, That who was playing Condoleezza Rice? Judith Owen, who is my wife. Your, 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 uh, your lovely and talented wife. That is correct, sir. Who also is in this, uh, this uh, Sarah Palin mm -hmm. thing, uh, the, the song, you know, the uh, Bridge to Nowhere, which is, we'll, we'll put up a link to that, too. Oh, good, 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 good. Um, yeah, that's, that's a song that's not on the record that just, just came out, so we yeah. have to rush that video onto the Internet to uh, compete with the Tina Fey's of the world. Well, I'll tell you, she's right up there. It's neck and neck because uh, she actually managed to look quite like uh, Sarah Palin, for my money, and, yes, and, and had the added uh, attraction of flying through the air as she sang, which I've never seen. I've never seen <laughs> Tina Fey do. That is correct. Well, we have we have access to certain technologies that I guess they don't at NBC, but uh, and uh, no no actual uh, prosthetic makeup was applied to Judith to make her look like uh, Sarah Palin, nor were any animals killed in the process. We're very proud of that. Well, that's great. Uh, the the um, and the so the Carl Rove song is Turd Blossom Special, right? Yes. And the uh, the which uh, has a memorable line: "I'm free as a bird. I won't be deterred." <laughs> yes. Which I'm I'm taking as kind of a double entendre. There, am I reading too much into this? I, no, you're not at all. Uh, uh -huh. I, I was I was influenced uh, only in that regard by a comedian who. Uh, had some prominence in the 70s and 80s named uh, Art Metrano. And I worked with him on some project, and, and it was a favorite phrase of his to, to uh, milk the double entendre of, I will not be deterred. And uh, <laughs> it just sprang back to mind at that moment. So there it is. Well, you, you really made it work in this one. <laughs> um, Thank you. And the other, the, another lyric that caught my attention was uh, in, the, in, the, in the song ostensibly done by, by Donald Rumsfeld, <laughs> Stuff Happens. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think I actually heard this on your radio show, but I'm thinking it must be the same the same song because I, I uh, the lyric I remember is "You fight with the army you have." You know, that's the famous Rumsfeld line that he was kind yes. of mocked for. And yeah. the next line is, "You say you fight with the army you have, otherwise you need another army." Yeah, well, it follows, doesn't it? When you put it like that, the logic is compelling. I don't know why anyone made fun of him because you're right. If you don't fight with the army you have, what darn army do you fight call, with? Call call Army Number Two. Call call Army Two dot oh. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, th that whole song was uh, sort of written, uh, uh, it's the only one where I, I did very little uh, actual lyric writing. I just took Donald Rumsfeld's uh, more famous uh, statements and quotations and uh, assembled them in a, in, a, in a kind of a song form. Um, our, our intel was bulletproof, he said at one point, which I, I thought was uh, lovely to recall at this point, too. Yeah. Yeah, in some cases, these these people, these these Bush people, did some of the creative work for you, and, and that yes, must indeed. have been a real time saver. It, it enabled me to uh, spend endless hours watching Project Runway when I otherwise would have been working. <laughs> uh, speaking of TV, did you uh, watch the most recent debate? Yes, I did. What what'd you what did you think? Um, I I like making these guys walk around uh, because. Um, to my uh, possibly demented uh, point of view, uh, the experience of the last eight years proves that whatever a candidate says during the campaign about what they're going to do when they get into office uh, is eminently disposable. Uh, I would cite uh, George W. Bush saying, "We're going to have a more humble foreign policy. We're not in the business. We're not going to be in the business of nation building, uh, and many more." Uh, so. Uh, much in the way the Miss America pageant and its state pageants allow you the opportunity to see the contestants walking around uh, as an aid to judging their uh, value as possible misses. Um, I thought it was nice to see these guys walk around. I, I, I would suggest choosing your, your presidential candidate on the basis of how you like their walk. 
And on that basis alone, do you have a uh, do you have a preference? Oh, I, I like Obama. He, it, it's uh, you know somebody. Uh, I like Obama's walk. I should say. Uh, somebody had a word yesterday on the internet that I had not previously seen applied to him, and I think it it, it actually fits in this context. Uh, he was described as feline. Hmm. I don't remember who that was, but it, it certainly. No, uh, he he has a cat-like grace. I would say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and he, and he moves on little cat feet too, so uh, that helps. Yeah, that helps. If you well, if you got the feet, the rest is easy. That's that's what I, that's, <laughs> that's the correct. problem where, that that's I correct. that I run into right away when I try to be feline. Yeah, the, you've got what the canine feet. Oh, at best, at best. Yeah. That's on a good day. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and 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 John McCain. I don't know what animal uh, um, you would have uh, something with less grace, certainly. Um, yeah, I, I I would say based on uh, an experience I had once uh, with an invasion of uh, my house by one of these, I would say uh, more possum like. I'm sorry, I did that broke up a little. You said what like? More possum like. Possum like. Yeah. Yeah, and that's just not a winning image when you <laughs> think about not. it. Although I I have to uh, in the context uh, give you the sound that the possum that invaded my house make when the uh, police officer came in at 3 in the morning and uh, tasered said possum. Wait, 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 wait. Really? This is true? Or yes, it's absolutely true. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, one thing I've always wondered, and maybe you can help me out here, what does a possum sound like when it's tasered? Uh, I'm interesting, Bob, I can answer that question. Uh, it's roughly like this. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> And does it, it grow more subdued in its behavior after that making that sound? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, the officer said to, to make a little trail for it to, to get out of the house so that it doesn't escape and go upstairs or anything, and we did. And uh, we thought that, that uh, as soon as the door was opened from the room the, the possum was, was trapped in, it would scamper out lickety-split, and instead it, it uh, was almost like a Looney Tunes cartoon. It, it sort of sauntered or sashayed out with an attitude of, well, if, you're, if I'm not wanted here, I'll take my possum business <laughs> elsewhere. Yeah. Well, nothing you've said in the last 90 seconds has made me more inclined to vote for a possum-like candidate, <laughs> I've got to say. Who was not said with that intent. Yeah. Um, so McCain then has an uphill battle even after that little that little uh, soliloquy. What, what, do, you, do you think, are you among those who think this is like over? I, I think when uh, the market had like, its third consecutive day of dropping 500 points, uh, uh, McCain's chances dropped right along with it. Uh, um, I, I think the idea of, of selling the premise that, oh, I'm not like those other Republicans, I'm, I'm, I'm a different Republican, um, really became almost impossible at that point. And, uh, you know, I, I think as every, you know, I'm, I'm afraid I, I fit into the conventional wisdom department here thinking that, uh, Obama has to make some fearsome mistake uh, at this point, and uh, yeah. the the view of you know I, it's it, almost inexcusable that we have election campaigns to go this long. But the the one uh, argument you can make in behalf of it is at least you can see how these guys manage something, and um, I think that the, the in the contest with Hillary Clinton and now in the contest with John McCain, uh, whatever one thinks of his policies or anything else about it. it, it uh, one has to say that Obama and the, and the group he has assembled around him have managed these campaigns uh, quite well. Yeah, and they are noted especially for their ground game, which I guess is supposed to be his ace in the hole. I mean, uh, that is to say, their ability to get out the vote mm -hmm. on, well, we'll on the day that. of the election. Yeah, we'll see about that. But I'm, I'm just talking about the, the basic um, way that they've, Sort of maintained an uh, a, 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 um, an even keel, and um, I think you know there there are meta messages that are sent by these campaigns. Uh, obviously, uh, John Kerry uh, four years ago sent a really dire one when uh, running as a wartime president. He wouldn't even uh, defend his own uh, military record. Okay, we're back. We uh, went offline and solved, uh, I don't know, between four and seven technical problems. <laughs> and uh, you had you were in the middle of talking about meta-messages. Yeah, I, and, and my point was simply that the, the Obama campaign, I think, uh, has sent a, a very uh, crucial meta-message that 
it's an even keel. Uh, the way the campaign has been run, mm -hmm. the uh, consistency of the of the of the messaging or messaging messages messaging uh, has sent this message that they've never had to brag about that they've just communicated through the, the way they've run the campaign, which is it's an even keel. Uh, and I think it's been helped by his uh, his feline quality. Yeah, um, and and I think the financial crisis has added value to that meta message. Um, I mean, you know, I think uh, a lot of people agree that McCain, this whole gambit he pulled of you know suggesting that they delay the debate until they resolve the the you know the bailout package issue um, was intended to show him taking command in a time of crisis, but it just made him look kind of erratic and panicky. Um, and I think uh, that kind of plays well into uh, Obama's strengths. Well, I, I did a, a, a radio spot uh, for the McCain campaign trying to, trying to tie that, you know, he suspended his convention when the hurricane was approaching. He suspended his campaign to go to Washington. He was going to suspend his, the first debate. I just thought that they were sending the message, when uh, trouble comes, I'll suspend. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, That's the message I got. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, and I think that's that's kind of the vibe out there. I'm trying to imagine things that, that could still save this for McCain. I do think, I mean, the, the financial crisis is so kind of inherently fluid. Who knows what's going to happen? And it, it could be that some way this could wind up, you know, McCain could cast him, I don't know, cast, manage to cast himself in a favorable light. The thing I worry about, you know, both because I'm not a big fan of terrorist attacks anyway, and because uh, a big terrorist attack might help uh, McCain, um, mm -hmm. is a terrorist attack. And there's even been, there are people I respect who have suggested that, look, Al Qaeda is smart enough to know that they would be better off with McCain as president because he would do more for their recruiting, and they know that a terrorist attack would help him, and so there is that kind of conspiracy uh, theory scenario. Bob, are, are you suggesting that, that Al-Qaeda has endorsed McCain? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm going Sean actually, Hannity on you here for a moment. Actually, so actually, yes. Now that you put okay. it that way, I think that was floating around my subconscious. But I, but until you came in and gave me that crucial help, I couldn't really quite articulate what my position is. <laughs> yes, I would say I, I'd go further and say that McCain has been palling around with terrorists. In fact, yeah, uh, I'll tell you what could help McCain uh, win the election in the in the face of this economic crisis if he came up with the 700 billion himself, you know, from the from the uh, wholesale beer distributorship, which. Uh, Reminds me of, you know, when the New York Times came out with that piece about his gambling background um, and his supposed gambling problem. My thought was, excuse me, if, if, if you want to be digging into something, and it's a little late to be doing that, but um, a, a guy whose entire political career is based on the money that he got uh, from his father-in-law, and the money is the wholesale beer business, which the last time I looked was only just a little bit cleaner than the record business. Um, w there's been no reporting on that whatsoever, you know. I guess it's as clean as the hound's tooth, but it, it, it defies my credulity, at least. So you think even beyond the properties of beer itself, uh, you, know, the, the, you know, alcohol being known to induce various behaviors that are disapproved of by the religious right, yeah, you're saying it's a it's a it's a type of business that what has uh, underworld influence or something? Uh, I'm saying that from what I've heard, the the wholesale distribution of alcoholic beverages generally in this country has been uh, not one that you'd want to go into if you if you uh, didn't know some people who uh, were packing. I see. Um, okay. Well, I would like to see some investigative reporting there. You know, the the other. I mean, there's a kind of a broader irony here, which is that. You know, Sarah Palin's base in particular is this kind of, you know, they're these, these kind of moral conservatives. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing is, both Sarah Palin and McCain have such kind of spotty moral records. I mean, McCain ad admits to cheating prolifically on his first wife. I think mm -hmm. not not just with, with Cindy McCain, but but with other women. women. Um, Sarah Palin, I mean, I don't want to get too judgmental or draw too many inferences, but if you look at the math associated with her marriage, it does seem as if she... Had and, you know, there's a pretty good chance that she was pregnant when she got married. And Obama and uh, uh, and Biden are, so far as we know, clean as a whistle. I mean, we, I haven't heard the slightest intimation that these guys are anything other than upstanding in that kind of realm of their lives, you know? Have you seen the, the uh, I, I, I don't relay uh, email chain things, uh, but somebody sent me something that <coughs> supposedly originated as a uh, letter to, to an editor somewhere that flipped the uh, a lot of 
um, of the pertinent facts of the lives of McCain and Obama to say, you know, how would what would your opinion be if uh, McCain were uh, high in his class at Harvard Law School and Obama had finished fifth from the bottom at a military academy? How would you feel if uh, McCain were still married uh, to the first woman uh, and Obama had had McCain's marital history and, and adulterous history. And it went on from there. Uh, and it, it was titled, I think, uh, <coughs> Proof of Racism. But I I just thought it was a, a provocative thing, to, a provocative exercise at the very least. Yeah, the, the you know, I mean, the, the, the idea that the people who proclaim themselves most loudly to be the defenders of traditional morality uh, have... Uh, more often had uh, a little problem in that regard, goes back to the first Ronald Reagan administration as governor of California with that uh, summit meeting at Lake Tahoe, I think at the end of his first year in, in office, where uh, he was told that he had to fire uh, a certain number of his close aides because they were gay. Hmm. I didn't know about that, actually. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then all the way through to the, the Oliver North uh, group uh, in the Reagan administration, which uh, apparently, I don't know about Colonel North himself, but there were um, one of his close aides, and I, I forget the name, so I won't uh, toss names around, uh, was a, a part of a group of, of uh, uh, gay uh, conservative Republicans. They do seem to have this problem with gay conservative Republicans from time to time. Yeah. Uh, the um, uh, uh, Although Sarah, Sarah Palin now tells us that she is actually very tolerant of gay people. Um, which... Which tells you something, perhaps, about her children? Uh, I, uh, actually, I don't know. You mean... Um, oh, I'm not saying anything, Bob. You're not, no. You wouldn't no. be suggesting what I think you're suggesting. No, not at all. No. I raised the question, and then I erased the question. Yeah. Uh, you raised it only to erase it. That's correct. Um, the the uh, so, so what are you... So I, I, I'm starting to get the impression that you are not on the Palin bandwagon. Is that right? Listen, I, I think she's, uh, she's, she's great for... Uh, for those of us in the comedy business, I was in London last week, and I, I have to say that uh, all of the doubt and wonder and awe and uh, condescending amusement that's come our way uh, during the Bush years has been uh, just gone through the multiplier uh, as a result of Sarah Palin. People in Britain, you know, and, and of course we rebelled against the British, so why do we care what they think? But uh, people in Britain just, uh, all they could ask me was, what, what, what do you make of that? What, 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 what is it? Basically, they're asking, what is that? <laughs> they just don't comprehend it all. And fortunately, I, I, I think I'm almost uniquely qualified to understand her because uh, one of my hobbies over the years, just if for no other reason than to fill time on my radio show, has been to collect the interview segments from uh, beauty pageants uh, around the country. And when you hear enough of, of these young women aspiring Miss This or That, uh, do those little 15-second uh, uh, interview segments where they're asked questions that they know the subject of because they're, they're based on their platform, uh, and, and hear them do these. Uh, well, I think that education is the future of America because without education, our young people will not be equipped to face the challenges of our future. And so to me, it's important for our young people to embrace education as a way of meeting the challenges of the future, then you really do understand the Sarah Palin phenomenon, aside from the accent. You know, you could have gotten into politics and done very well, I think. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there's still hope. Yeah, it's, it's, there's a, it's, it's a wide-open niche, as far as you know, I can see. If, if, if Al Franken, then anyone. That's a good point. You now have a role model. <laughs> I, would yeah. vote, I would vote for you. Thank you. Um, I'd vote for you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the... Um, yeah, I, and and I mean, you can say this about Sarah Palin, though. I mean, wouldn't you give her the following endorsement? Smarter than Miss Teen South Carolina? Yeah, well, smarter than that particular one. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, you know, um, we, we may see Al Fra the aforementioned Mr. Franken in the Senate, so, you know. It could get pretty wild. Um, yeah. What is your actual view on her? I mean, there, there, there is serious disagreement on kind of how... Um, well, I guess the the direct way to say it would be to, is how smart she is, right? I mean, yeah. there's the view that, well, you know, she's intentionally lacking in polish, but she's very canny, and, you know, she was ambushed by Katie Couric, but by and large, she's... Blind. Ambushed? 
whatever. And what newspapers do you read was an ambush question. Uh, yeah, well, I'm just I'm just trying to imagine know, the, the alternative perspective being the broad-minded yes. person that I am. But, um, I mean, what is your real appraisal of... Uh, well, look. Uh, uh, speaking not as as a person who makes fun of people, but but uh, no, uh, but just as taking putting on my other hat, whatever that might be, I think that the Democrats have uh, wasted years and uh, election possibilities uh, beguiling themselves with the notion that George W. Bush isn't smart enough to be president, um, and uh, you know it, it delighted liberals for years to to snicker at his. Um, clumsy locutions. Uh, I certainly got some mileage out of it myself. But uh, I don't think that got to the real problem of this administration, which was um, hubris, uh, arrogance, ignorance, and secrecy, um, all of which were uh, engineered by very smart people uh, around Bush. Hello, Mr. Cheney. So I don't think the, the you know, the, the problem is not, you know, Sarah Palin's IQ scores. Uh, uh, some of our worst mistakes have been made by our smartest presidents or by the, the smartest people around them. You know, uh, I'd point to both Vietnam and Iraq. Um, the, the the problem, I think, is is just don't vote for a beauty queen. <laughs> what, however smart she is. Yeah. You, you know, if that's been your your first uh, step on your career path, mm. uh, the, the highest place you should achieve is, the highest position you should achieve is, uh, you know, anchor on the 5 o'clock news. That's just me. And she did make it to, uh, what, sportscaster? Sportscaster, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you see, she should have stopped there, but that's just a personal president. Yeah. And uh, are you uh, kind of, I, I'm starting to hear people who are kind of genuinely horrified by uh, the kind of hatred she's been seeming to stir up toward Obama. I mean... Uh, just in the last few days, just beginning mm -hmm. with palling around with, with terrorists. I mean, how, mm -hmm. how creepy do you... Uh... Uh, you know, I don't. I think whoever had that slot in the McCain campaign uh, would be uh, reading those words right about now. Um, I, I don't think that's uh, to be attributable to Palin. I think that's to be attributed to uh, Steve Schmidt and Nicole Wallace and, and the Bush people who uh, basically dominate the, the campaign of the reformer. Yeah. At this point. And, uh, yeah, and I kind of thought they started, <clears throat> they they overreached with lipstick on a pig. Uh, but I guess <laughs> yeah. that hasn't made them gun shy, apparently. I uh, no, I, I, you know, I, I thought that the, the, the main uh, uh, blowback from lipstick on a pig was that they got this wave of, uh, they woke up kind of the journalistic fraternity that, that responded with those couple weeks of stories about McCain's. Uh, uh, lies in his, his advertisements, which which seems a little uh, harsh for uh, for our media these days, but they seem to have calmed right down again. And and th this stuff, this uh, uh, Obama palling around with terrorist stuff, isn't aimed for the approval of the the media elite anyway. It's 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 right to the gut of the the base. Yeah. But I mean, it just, it just genuinely, I mean, I guess you could say this about all negative campaigning, and both sides do some of it, but this kind of thing seems as if it could just deeply undermine Obama's ability to lead the entire nation uh, when he's president. I mean, when you really try to drive home the message to a lot of, Amer as many Americans as will listen, that the guy is basically a traitor. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 you know, that's, I don't know, I think that's kind of unfortunate, but I, I think that it, it, it does more than that, you know. Uh, I think that the vogue of, of negative campaigning that sort of has gotten its modern uh, push with, with Lee Atwater's 1988 campaign, for which he apologized on his deathbed, um, ha has helped, along with the policies of successive governments, to undermine the whole idea of, of uh, America's Americans' uh Belief that uh, any of these people uh, is capable of anything useful. Uh, now, you know we do have a, a revolutionary history, and and a lot of that is probably a, a good thing. Um, but it may have reached a tipping point where, uh, oh crap! If I've used the phrase tipping point, I should just stop right there. Uh, I'm giving I'm giving you. Uh, uh, you, you I grant one one of those utterances per per show. <laughs>
You get you get absolution and can continue, but don't let it happen again. By using the phrase tipping point, I myself reached a, a tipping point. Right? <laughs> that's that's the end. Or or jumped the shark. <laughs> did I say that? Um, yes, you did. Uh, so wait, but what would you have said if that sentence had continued? Oh well, I just you know if, if there is a point where there can be too much contempt for uh, uh, the leadership class, uh, the profusion of negative campaigning may have contributed to it. Um, because the, the sum total of all of it is, they are all traitors, they all stink, they all steal, they all cheat, they all do this. Um, because it all just contributes to that sense of, of they're all worthless. Mm -hmm. Now, they may all be, they may all be worthless, but uh, that's to be determined, I guess. Yeah. You know, it's very interesting hearing you uh, explicitly opine about things, because in the normal course of your work, you don't do it explicitly. I mean, I, I feel I have a pretty good sense for your views, but in, in your various ways of expressing yourself politically, right, it is mm -hmm. almost never an explicit statement about what you believe, right? That's correct. Um, I, I don't endorse, and uh, frankly, uh, for the vast majority of, of this election cycle, I, I resolutely um, did not uh, allow myself to, to uh, become emotionally attached to any of the candidates hmm. be, uh, for a very parochial, uh, but I'll, I'll also say legitimately parochial reason. Um, I'm a part-time resident and, and a homeowner in New Orleans, Louisiana, and um, I felt that ab my my uh, allegiance was uh, up for grabs for the first candidate, Republican or Democrat, in the primaries to say something uh, substantive about, uh, A, what happened there, and B, uh, how to deal with it going forward. And uh, uh, nobody, pa nobody passed that bar. Uh, nobody did so. Uh, I mean, John Edwards, who failed for other reasons, um, came down and used the Lower Ninth Ward as a uh, backdrop for the photo op announcing his candidacy. And uh, I got some, some blowback at the Huffington Post for, for criticizing him for doing that. And uh, then I went and looked at his website to see what exactly he was saying about New Orleans. And uh, the lead item on the, uh, his agenda for New Orleans was more cops. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's one approach. The, yeah. the, uh, the, were you in New Orleans at the time of the hurricane? Uh, no, uh, I was uh, in pre-production on uh, uh, four-year consideration, so I got back uh, about two and a half months after the, uh, as we referred to, to it down there, the flood, or was, uh, as many of us referred to it down there, the federal flood. Um, I think, you know, my, uh, having grown up in and around the media, uh, the, the news media specifically, uh, my boy, boyish uh, kind of connection to it, was broken by two things, the, the credulity, the epidemic of credulity in the run-up to the war, and the uh, com combination of drastic misreporting of that event, uh, twinned with uh, the obsessive patting on the back for how, what a great job they did. Well, there was a fair amount of critical media attention eventually, right? Uh, to the response. To the response. To FEMA, to Mike Mike Brown, who was of course a figurehead, uh, uh, Mike Chertoff, who was Mike Brown's boss, and uh, you know where Mike Chertoff was the day after the levees broke and, and flooded New Orleans? I couldn't tell you offhand. He was in Atlanta attending a conference on bird flu. Huh. Well, maybe he was trying to get ahead of the curve for once. Yeah, and according to uh, Jane Mayer's wonderful book, wonderfully scary book, The Dark Side, he was also read in to. Uh, uh, when he was uh, at uh, Justice Department, all of the really dire uh, detention uh, and interrogation techniques that have so distinguished our country in the last few years. Uh, and yet Chertoff has never faced any accountability for any of it. So, yeah, I mean, the, the media, you know, the Bush administration dangled Mike Brown in front of them, and the media, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, bit away at, and ate away at that corpse. But... Uh, <laughs> Very little reporting on uh, the federal agency that really did cause the disaster, which is the Army Corps of Engineers, hmm. uh, over 40 years under administrations of both parties, and uh, which, God help us, is the agency that we're in New Orleans that we're depending on to fix things right this time. 
You mean they're just their their upkeep on the levees had just been uh, manifestly it substandard, or it wasn't the upkeep? It was the design and construction <laughs> in the first place. The upkeep was never the question. The the, the problem as revealed by three separate uh, forensic engineering studies after the disaster was a, a and I clearly I'm no engineer, but I've read all these reports and talked to the uh, some of the people who've done the studies a, a series of mind-numbingly obvious uh, engineering errors and. Uh, uh, judgments that the, that the Army Corps made while building. For example, the uh, Corps' uh, margin of safety in building levees uh, in populated areas like big cities is very much lower than their margin of safety that they use when they build dams in agricultural areas. Huh. Kind uh, of ironic. Kind of ironic, isn't it? Yeah. But at least those, those uh, drowning people can have corn to eat. Um, uh, another one, the the Corps was basing its uh, decisions on how, how high to build this stuff on a, a series of elevation figures for the area. They got updated elevation figures from the Coast and Geodetic Survey in the early 1980s and decided to disregard it. That was their choice. So, 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 so you think just by focusing on the reaction per se, we were totally missing the boat? Absolutely. Uh, it was not a natural disaster. The, the, Dr. Bob B. of UC Berkeley, who led one of these uh, studies, says uh, if it hadn't been for the catastrophic failure of what the Corps built, the worst that New Orleans would have suffered during Katrina was, and uh, these are his words, wet ankles. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and, and that was, in, and this was, a, this was a bipartisan failing. I mean, I mean this had nothing to do with, with party, really. It was, it was Absolutely. And I think that's why the, the political structure uh, walked away from it. Uh, it's very much like what happened when, when the SNL crisis happened, and both parties had their oars deep in that water, and they just set up the RTC very quickly to clean it up. And, and you know, when you hear, this is not the time for finger pointing, uh, you realize that uh, both both sides are uh, stuck uh -huh. in the muck and just want to, in, in the great, horrible American phrase of this era, move on. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, it, characterized by Bush saying the other day, we, we don't, we don't want to, point fingers of, during this time of economic crisis. We want to solve the problem. And, yeah, you know, yeah, let's solve the problem without knowing how it came about. That's a good idea. That's a good plan. <laughs> yeah, so, so I mean, speaking of bipartisan uh, blame, uh, mm -hmm. do, you, do you view yourself as a kind of equal opportunity cynic? I mean, on, on your radio show, on the show, uh, since I discovered it, and by the way, let me. Tell, I'm wondering if you remember the show that I that I discovered. Mm -hmm. It was uh, not long before 9/11, and, and uh, you know, as, as you may remember, the person who was most helped by 9/11 was this congressman, was it Gary Condit, who, who was oh, yeah. who was current, who was at that point under grave suspicion of having done something. I think we now know he didn't do, which was murder. Uh, congressional, Chandra Levy. Uh, yeah, Chandra Levy, with whom he was in fact having an affair, but mm -hmm. uh, didn't didn't kill her. Um, Anyway, that that story was wiped off the headlines by 9/11, and and yes. and, uh, and uh, the but 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 before 9/11, as I recall, you did some skit on the show about interviewing not Condit, but you went back to his hometown, and there was some character you made up, like his brother or something. Does this yeah. at all ring a bell? Yeah, it rings a distant bell. Yeah, you, you know, do one. I know you do one of these every week. It was hilarious. Thanks. I was just. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, I was just uh, rolling in the aisles, and and that's when I kind of put the pieces together about the various uh, the various dimensions of your uh, of your work. Um, but uh, I mean, you know, like I had seen Spinal Tap and blah blah blah. But anyway, with that as with, with that as the the fawning preamble to this question, <laughs> the question is, you know, listening to your show since then, the main manifestations of your cynicism uh, are. Are, are aimed at you know conservatives, uh, you know, uh, and and look, I think it's safe to infer from what we've said that on balance, you know, you are somewhere left of, of center. But at the same time, it, it it has been the case during that period of time that it, this has been the Bush presidency. There have been these famous screw ups, so it's natural uh, that that you know that would be one of your main targets. I'm just wondering how you view your mission. I, I, do, do you? Uh, are, are you, in principle, as as eager to ex expose the, the foibles of people all across the political spectrum? 
You had to stop the fawning to ask that, huh? Uh, I did. I could continue yeah. with the fawning if you well, would like. Well, yeah. That would be, uh, I, I made uh, fun of the Clinton administration all during the Clinton administration. I made fun of the Reagan administration all during the Reagan administration. If this country would elect more Democrats, I'd make fun of more Democrats. Um, I, I think the satir, you know, I, I reject the, the description cynic. Cynics are the people who are in government and uh, say things like the stuff that's in Jane Mayer's book that comes out of the mouths of Rumsfeld and Cheney, uh, or uh, people like uh, the, the person that, uh, I guess it was Fannie Mae who said, in, it was quoted in the New York Times on Sunday, as saying, we didn't really know what we were buying, referring to the uh, toxic stuff, uh, and yet, say it's for public consumption, Everything's great. Uh, I'm a skeptic and a satirist, and I think it's uh, the job of somebody so self-described uh, to go after what in another country would be described as the people who have the monopoly of the guns, in this country, the majority of the guns. Okay. Um, now, this has been great. This last eight years, of course, the, the bigger the mess, the, the greater the fun for, yeah. for people like me. But uh, my only regret is that during the Clinton administration, because of the um, really remarkable wave of, of stuff that was coming at him from um, the, the Richard Mellon scape machine, you know, uh, Jerry Falwell, lest we forget, peddling uh, videos accusing uh, Clinton of multiple murders, um, I, I probably didn't uh, jump to the conclusion, uh, which I think is normally the best conclusion to jump to, assume the worst, and um, was was late to the party on assuming that the the uh, Monica Lewinsky stuff was true. Okay, so uh, so you're 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 an equal opportunity cynic in principle. Not cynic. Okay, that, that was my next question. How would yeah. you characterize your worldview? Oh, uh, I I believe uh, every every real satirist is a. Uh, disappointed uh, optimist. Yeah. You know? Um, I, I, in my personal life, I, uh, I still believe in stuff that I, I think uh, uh, gets trashed on a daily basis in our public life, you know? Like, progress. Yeah. Um, and do you think, uh, so, but, but you would not describe your attitude as cynicism. No, no. Cynicism is 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 very different. Cynicism is is uh, the people who you know, uh, in both my business and in political business, uh, think they're pulling one over on the uh, rubes in flyover country. Those are cynics. Okay. I'm a, I'm a skeptic. You're a skeptic, and I mean, yeah. I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I was thinking of cynic as someone who who is just quite suspicious of people and 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 tends to detect uh, self-serving motivation in what they do. And I would say you'd have to agree that you're not oblivious to self-serving motivation when it does show up in human events. No, not at all. Um, but I, I think my understanding of cynics is that they they are, uh, uh, you know taking big, 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 giant slices of the pie for themselves while saying to the public, I'm doing this all for you. Mm -hmm. And has, uh, in terms of how disappointed we should be with, with political leadership, I mean, uh, how far from ideal it is, uh, do you think it's really objectively gotten kind of worse in, in the last uh, 30 years? Well, I mean, speaking as a as a native Californian and, and therefore as a native Nixonologist, uh, <laughs> I used to think that Richard Milhouse Nixon was was you know the gold standard, um, and and uh, I'm not the first to say that he looks positively benign and and kind of um, glorious in retrospect. Uh, um, on the other hand, it, it does strike me that what we've seen with the Iraq War is almost a mirror image of what we saw during the Vietnam War, where the best, you know, as David Halberstam described them, the best and the brightest around L, uh, JFK and LBJ uh, led him blithely into that, those, led them blithely into those mis that misadventure, based in, in, in somewhat the same way on a, a, a surpassing and stunning ignorance of the part of the world they were mucking about in, combined with the, the arrogance of, you know, America can do anything. So in that way, I don't think it's gotten worse at all. I think it just repeated itself with the, with the lovely kind of historical uh, fillip of having the man who gained 
great public prominence and uh, uh, respect for uh, embodying the lessons of Vietnam, being the man who had to uh, eat all that for breakfast and, and poop out um, uh, a speech at the UN um, sort of proclaiming the end of his vision. I'm talking about Colin Powell, of course. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it's it, it sounds like, I mean, I'm inferring this from stuff you said earlier. You are not head over heels in love with any of the presidential candidates. I don't think that's a good idea to be. Yeah. That's not a good way to be. You know, first love can only ha- should only happen once in life. Well, is there a candidate who was your first love long ago? Oh, uh, long ago, yeah, absolutely. Um, um, uh, I, I remember uh, working as a driver at the 1960 Democratic Convention and being uh, uh, this tells you how naive and, and ignorant about politics I was at that time, and being really uh, disappointed that the Democrats were going to choose uh, the pretty boy John F. Kennedy when I thought they should have <laughs> sent Adlai Stevenson up. For ah, a, a Stevenson guy, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, it, it, you know, that's my problem is uh, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm drawn to the smart guy. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I think that's why I, I have learned to react uh to say, as I did earlier, uh, you know, it, it's a mistake to, to poke fun at these, uh, not to poke fun, but to make, get distracted if you're, if you're seriously interested in this stuff uh, by, oh, they're not smart enough for me. Yeah. And I say Stevenson, I, I, I think, was a combination of smart and genuinely high-minded, uh, uh, so far as I know, right? I mean, you can name smart politicians that have shown up since then, and some of them uh, have so vividly, you know, failed to to uh, uh, I don't know to, to maintain their idealism or, or or stand for much of anything, and have been been so so clearly shown weak and really in their personal lives or whatever. Gary Hart comes to mind. Well, a bunch of people come to Bill mind. Bill Clinton comes to mind. I, I mean, I, I would say, in fact, one of the few people who doesn't come to mind. In a way, you know, Jimmy Carter. Say what you will. Pretty smart, pretty earnest. He meant well. You know, I don't know how many presidents you can really say that about. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I think I think Stevenson was, you know, certainly distinguished himself as one of the uh, few uh, Illinois governors not to end up in jail. Um, so I guess that means he was high-minded. Yeah. So uh, I, I say that because people always poke fingers, point fingers at, at Louisiana as a, a hotbed of corruption, but you know. Uh, when you look at the dollar figures involved there as compared to, let's say, Alaska, mm-hmm. let alone Illinois or Boston, uh, you know, we're pikers. Yeah. So people, just, people destroy their careers down there for, you know, 20 grand. So if you were doing a blurb for uh, Louisiana politics, it would be not as corrupt as what, uh, Chicago. I would say you, 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 you can buy us cheap. Yeah. Well, there's something to be said for that. Yeah. Well, especially in this economy. In this economy, you look yeah. for bargains where you can find them. That's right. you guys Come on really down. Come on down. We, we don't cost you much. Yeah, I will be. I will be down. Um, and uh, so, yeah. In closing, let me just quickly ask you about that financial crisis. Are you genuinely uh, horrified and petrified, scared? Um, I have to say that um, because I was uh, the child of Europeans on both sides, um, I got. I, I did not get the American gene. Uh, I, when I, when I was poor, which I was for many more years than when I've been lucky enough to have some money, uh, at every stage of my life, I've never borrowed. It just was something, if, you know, I had this thing of, if you can't afford it, don't buy it. Mm-hmm. And, um, yes, I think there's going to be a lot of pain. Um, my, my wish would be, I think it's probably doomed to, uh, disappointment, mm-hmm. but my wish would be that a little of that would, would infuse, uh, this country again, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, sh- I share that hope. But as long as you've got some money, if I needed a few thousand, like yeah. in a pinch, would you would you be there for me? Uh, with a lot more fawning. A lot, uh, a lot more fawning? A lot more fawning would be the price. I will devote a, I will devote a show to fawning. Okay. You don't even have to show up. It'll be about you, and I will, I will email you the video. Fawning would be good, because I can stay in bed and just... Yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. Luxuriate in the funding. Absolutely. The, okay. uh, we're, we're, our business model is evolving. Excellent. And and I can see that I can see that happening before we'll long. We'll talk. We'll talk about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So listen, thank you so much for taking the time. I want to again hold up the arresting image on your latest CD. Um, we're good. And, and we'll link to it. Encourage people 
uh, to uh, to buy it and and also link to some of the specific songs in the video uh, manifestations thereof. Look, in closing, you know, some people on on the on, uh, at, at, at Blogging Heads who knew I was going to do this. They asked me to try to extract from you a Mr. Burns excellent. And I said, look, I'm not going to play fawning fanboy. <laughs> and, but then I've already done kind of the fawning part. Yeah. But it's your call. It's totally your call. Smithies, release the hounds. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Okay, I had, thank I you. Time and, and it was a, a thrill to sit in the Mickey Cow seat. Few, few are so honored. <laughs> I know. Yeah, and it's warm. And, and almost none of them consider it an honor. You're all, you're just about alone there. Okay, uh, I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, thanks. Bye, bye.